have ambition but feel like you don't have the time, energy, or information to actually succeed? What if I told you this one thing could take you from lost, busy, and distracted to focused, disciplined, and efficient? I'll also give you five easy steps to solve this problem at the end, so stick around. We've all done it, been stuck on our phones, whether it's while we're trying to work, just waiting in line, or even talking to our friends. We find ourselves constantly reaching for our phones. But have you ever stopped to actually think about the problem with this? I personally wasted hours, even full days, distracted by apps and phone games. I posted thousands of videos across my social media combined. I've even temporarily changed career paths and appearance because of what I heard on social media. I used to spend excessive time on platforms like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube Shorts even. We'll talk about the actual solution to all this and why it matters. Constantly being on our phones disconnects us completely from our surroundings. And it also takes a toll on our mental health. The short-term dopamine hits we get from social media create a vicious and terrible cycle of just consuming. The devices completely control our lives. We feel connected, but alone. We already know that they're designed and optimized to be addictive. And if we ignore that fact, we just waste endless hours mindlessly scrolling. And at a certain point, we don't even enjoy the content. But don't worry, breaking free it's pretty easy. It just requires some self-awareness and discipline. Using this knowledge, we'll be able to have a healthier relationship with our phones and any technology we use. First, take a look around. Everywhere you go, you'll find people just stuck on their phones. There's one study that said the average American checks their phone 47 times a day. If you're between 18 and 24, which is most of my audience, that number jumps to 82 times a day. And if you look at your screen time right now, I can guarantee you it's probably at least two to five hours. Oversharing on social media, just posting on content a lot can lead you to start seeking validation. And the problem with this is it takes away from the true mission that you started with. So with my clothing brand, for example, I started with a mission to inspire creatives. But the posts that did the best were when I talked about my success, when I talked about my sales. This is a lot of times how they get more sales because when people see something doing well, they actually want to invest in it. But it became unhealthy because I look at who was watching all my content. I start to feel bad if certain people weren't watching it or if it didn't get enough views. And it just took away from the actual purpose I started with. Next is the obvious, and that's time. If you look at your screen time, it's probably super, super high. And you'd be surprised how much time you actually get back. You've probably heard this a million times before, but I want to try to give you a different perspective on time. Pretty much everyone says they're busy. Everyone thinks they're the hardest working. Yet our phone times are like four, eight, even 12 hours. So if your phone time is over four hours, even just two hours, you can't say you're the busiest person in the world. And at the same time, being busy doesn't matter because we all have the same 24 hours in a day. Just what do we actually want to do with those 24 hours? Do we want to scroll on Instagram? Do we want to try to make content for just getting views? Or do we actually want to get better, improve, and bring some value to people? Next problem is it makes you check out from reality physically and mentally. You're just staring down at your phone. And this translates over into all the other things you're doing. So when you try to focus on work, when you try to practice or create, you're simply not there physically and mentally. And the second you get a bad feeling, you want to pick up your phone and distract yourself from it. I uninstall the apps. I am still a creator. I don't post on Instagram and TikTok anymore because I'm focusing on one platform. But my accounts are still up, of course. So if you're a creator, I'm not suggesting you just delete everything. I'm just saying uninstall it limit your consumption, and pretty much stop caring about validation. And it's crazy how much of a difference it makes, because instead of waking up and going on your phone, it forces you to face everything and actually do the work. Americans spend an average of four hours a day on their phone. And four hours a day for seven days is 28 hours. That's more than you would be working a part-time job. Everyone's complaining about how they're busy and they don't have enough time, but it just doesn't make sense. So a lot of people that say they're busy, they go and do events, they're scrolling on social media. It's just not a valid excuse in 2024. Not until you've actually taken control of your time, leave social media, and actually work efficiently all day. Now the other possibility for this, instead of just straight up deleting all the apps, is to control exactly what you're watching. So just watch productive content on YouTube. And if you still need to post on Instagram and TikTok, you can just unfollow everyone so you don't even see any posts. Because even when I post on Instagram and TikTok, I do it from my laptop, but I don't follow anybody so I don't see any posts. All I have to do create the content, put it up there. I do consume YouTube sometimes as well, but only productively. And it just really changes your mind from short-term dopamine hits, just always seeking that. Because a lot of times we'll just switch from one addiction to the other. Wanting to eat junk food, consume content, shows and Netflix, video games, all of it is around the same thing, just that mindset of short-term dopamine. But then when we switch, suddenly we can actually work and get better. It becomes a lot easier to get to the gym to build a career. So here's some actually actionable steps. Because a lot of these videos, they just say, 
social media bad, delete. That's not very helpful because it doesn't actually give you any solution. So in all of my videos, I wanna inform the problem, talk about my experience with it, and then actually give you solutions. So here are the action steps you could take. Number one, actually track all of your time. Use something like Google Calendar, or even just make a spreadsheet and track every single time you pick up your phone, every ounce of work you do in a day. And you'll find when you track every single minute of your time, you're not as efficient as you think you are. And it can also bring light to what you're working on and make you reevaluate what you're actually working on. So let's say you're trying to create music in a day and you actually track your time. You might say, oh, I spent 12 hours in the studio today, but how much of that was actually working? And it might not all be social media. It might kind of be productive procrastination. Six hours just working on a four bar loop. So once you've tracked all this time, you start swapping out the habits and really reevaluating where your time is going. It's important to actually swap them with different habits because a lot of times that addiction will just get replaced so for example a long time ago I played video games then I quit video games completely and I switched that with watching Marvel but then I stopped watching Marvel and then all of a sudden I was on TikTok all the time because I felt TikTok was productive because I was posting TikTok then I quit TikTok so essentially you just have to purposefully figure out what you want to replace it with so now instead of consuming content I just create content and when I can't create I focus on self-improvement or getting to the gym or diet and so pretty much every time I have that thought I want to watch a show I want to do this. I know exactly what I'm going to do instead. And that's make these videos, make actually valuable content for people, work on myself, or work on my career. And the final thing is to make your consumption actually productive like I did. So instead of just watching like Mr. Beast or just scrolling through random TikToks, find a YouTuber or find people that actually make valuable content. I'm not even saying this has to be me. If you find YouTube distracting and that you're just watching a bunch of Mr. Reese videos, by all means, delete it. And that might be crazy coming from me as a YouTuber, because that would mean I'd lose you as a viewer. But ultimately, that's not the whole purpose of this channel. The purpose of this channel is to help you in your career. And getting rid of distractions will help you in your career. But if you do decide to stick around, make sure you subscribe, because I'm going to keep trying to make the most valuable content possible. But there's a simple five day challenge that can completely cure this and you'll regain control of your work and your life. Day one, we just want to bring awareness. Check your screen time and actually track everything you do in a day. Day two, we're going to swap old habits. So instead of just getting rid of the phone habit, we want to actually swap them for new ones. Because the problem when we just get rid of a habit is naturally another bad habit is going to take its place. So replace your lock screen with something that reminds you of your goals or even just a black screen. Get rid of every single app that you don't need on your phone. The only app I actually benefit from is YouTube and watching self-improvement type videos. And even then, if that's a distraction, go ahead and get rid of it. You can always go on your laptop to post if you're a content creator. And if you really need to watch something or you're watching something educational like this video, again, you can do that from your laptop if you need to. Of course, having YouTube on your phone isn't a big problem, especially if you're using it productively. Day three, we're going to change our environment. So we're going to make our surroundings more ready to support our goals. A lot of times I'll leave my phone on a charger all the way on my bed, which my back is turned to when I'm working. So to actually reach and get my phone would require me to get up and physically move. It makes it easier to not be addicted. Day four, we're going to turn off notifications. Might as well just keep it on a charger and focus on your work. Finally, on day five, we'll do things like meditation or gratitude, or it could be journaling. Just anything that's going to help you improve your mental space. So by completing this five day challenge, you're already pretty much ready to break free from your phone addiction because small habits make a huge difference. And of course, this is all things I'm doing. So not having the apps on my phone, having simple lock screens, making sure I'm not on social media unless I'm posting or watching educational content. These are things I even still struggle with. So we're in this together. So now that you have the time and energy and you've gotten rid of these old habits, now we need to figure out what to do with that time and how to actually achieve our goals. In order to make the greatest progress you've ever made in your life within the next three to six months, make sure you watch this video next, and I'll see you there.